everybody. This is Cindy Utter. Welcome to my Artsy Endeavors. Have fun. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Cindy Utter here. It is time to work on my story again today. Um, I'm going to read actually two different um, chapters in this book. Sorry, I had to get comfortable. I apologize. Ugh. Okay. So, the last video I told you guys I was going to be working on emotions. Um, we're going to start working on emotions and we're going to start working on how I got through these emotions. Um, they don't just come, you get through it and go away. For quite a while they will cycle and you'll go through this entire range of emotions which are denial, scared, angry, grief, and acceptance. Okay, So all of these emotions they, they continue to, to cycle. All right, until you actually, I think you have to get yourself into a mental spot where you're okay with it. So what I'm going to read to you, I have two different um, letters in here that I really think talks about the denial and talks about these feelings to begin with. So I'm going to start out with talk about what you're feeling. This is done by Barbara J. Hall. And this is out of the book, You Are Stronger Than You Know, Words of Hope and Encouragement for Someone Living with Chronic Illness. And it's a Blue Mountain Arts collection. Okay? Talk about what you're feeling. Good or bad, feelings need expression. They must be recognized and given freedom to reveal themselves. It isn't wise to hide behind a smile when your heart is breaking. That is not being true to how you feel inside. Put away the myth that says you must be strong enough to face the whole world with a smile and a brave attitude all the time. You have your feelings that say otherwise, so admit that they are there, use their healing power to put the past behind you, and realize those expressive stirrings in your heart are very much a part of you. Use them to find peace within and be true to yourself. This is huge when it comes to the denial. Okay, we'll get more into that. The second one is Just Do Your Best. This is by Colin McCarty. Just do your best. It's not always easy to know which path to follow, which decision to make, or what to do. Life is a series of new horizons, new hopes, new days, and changes that come to you. And we all need some help with these things from time to time. Be positive, for your attitude will affect the outcome of many things. Ask for help when you need it. Seek the wisdom the world holds and hold on to it. Make some progress every single day. Begin, believe, and become. Give yourself all the credit you're due. Don't shortchange your qualities, your abilities, or any of the things that are so unique about you. Remember how precious life can be. Imagine. Invest the time it takes to reach out for your dreams. It will bring you happiness that no money on earth can buy. Don't be afraid to go through life at your own pace. What's the best thing to do? It's simple. Do your best and everything else will fall into place. And I really like that one as well. So what I'm going to do, we're going to start out with um, denial. This is chapter 10. Um, here was chapter 9, and on to chapter 10. Now, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do one page for this one. Alright, so we've got it. The first thing I'm going to do is get some gesso. And you know what? We're going to use gray gesso today. Because with denial, denial's not happy, but it's not black, right? I just have to find my gray gesso. There it is. Um, so let's, unfortunately we've got a lot of things here. Happiness, the best day, that, that's all going to be covered up. So let's start out with our gray gesso. Ooh, that's really thick on top. Oh, da-da-da, and a palette knife. 
a sword. Let's look at that. So we're just going to start by putting down some gesso and talk about denial. <laughs> We've all had it. We've all been there, whether it's denial of, you know, something our kids might have done. Oh, no, no, they would never do that. Or, um, you know, just denial is, is it's not a good emotion. <laughs> um, denial makes you think things are better than they really are and doesn't allow you to accept things the way they are and it just I don't like I don't like denial I don't like that emotion that's me so like I said the first thing I'm doing is just putting down some gesso we're gonna cover you up all that happy stuff because when you're in denial you're not happy so what was I in denial about I was in denial that it wasn't that bad. It's not that bad. I couldn't hurt myself that bad. Nah. Nah. It'll heal. We're going to get it fixed. I'm going to find the right doctor. He's going to take care of me. I'm going back to work. Life is good. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? That's denial. Yet, when you're in denial, you try to continue to do things your normal way. And when you have a chronic injury or illness... Um, that doesn't work because the only thing that happens, I'm putting quite a nice layer on this. I'm not sure why I just, I like it. Um, when that happens, you just cause yourself more pain and then you get mad at yourself. So you get that anger in there. Then, you know, you, you take your day off and you lay on the couch and want net, watch Netflix or whatever. And then you're like, oh, cool. I'm all better. And you go right back to doing the same things you did that put you there the first time. And it continues to go like that. You, um, you know, you make your normal plans. Oh, I can go out shopping all day and then I can go to dinner. And yeah, let's, you know, let's go see a movie after that. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. All right, this is going bye-bye. Um, denial is a very rough emotion to get through. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to dry this really quick, <laughs> or maybe not. We're going to dry this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is almost dry. Now, um, one thing about denial, the actual um, definition of denial is the action of declaring something to be untrue, or the refusal of something requested or desired, or a statement that something is not true. So, in other words, denial, you, you don't believe it. Um, it's not true. It's not happening to me. You know, this, it, it's got to get better, right? So what I have here is I have, this is an old picture of me. Really old. <laughs> it's back when I was working. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got this black and white picture here. And I decided, that's when I didn't have purple hair. I don't even know who this person is now, but back then I didn't. All right, what I've decided to do is this. It's still a little bit wet here and there. There. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take some matte medium, Ugh, maybe, and I'm going to take a paintbrush. Let's see here. For some reason, I, I just don't have some stuff out this morning. I was doing other things that didn't require paintbrushes. Um, and we're going to put this down. Now, this is this is going to be a representation of me in that denial. So, I'm just going to glue this in here. And we're going to glue this one down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on, I'm just going to glue the rest of this page, just so it all has kind of the same coating. We're going to work on that denial right there. So let me, yeah, I'm going to put this in here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. 
All right. I've got this piece right here. Hang on a second, and I'll show it to you. What it says. This is a piece I wanted. Look what it says. Living in denial, right there. So let's throw a little bit more gooper down. I got way too much mud on, or a matte medium on here, but you know what? That's okay. It's okay. You know what? I've got two pieces of color on there. I don't want that color there. denial. So yes, was I doing this? Absolutely. I would do something stupid like go to the doctors and then decide that, you know, I had to go get groceries on the same day and, you know, they tell me you can't lift stuff. Well, yeah, yeah I can. Well, guess what? No, you can't. They tell you that stuff for a reason and it takes quite a while for, for some people to figure out what the reason is, and it took me a while. Let me dry this up, I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually took a little bit of a break, and uh, this is pretty well dry now. It's a little bit lumpy, but that's okay. Or not lumpy, it's like bleh, 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 folded. It's all good, it's all good. Okay. What we need to do is, we need to talk about this denial. How do we deal with it? <laughs> One, it's not easy. Okay. Um, the best way I found to deal with the denial is to actually start listening to what my body was saying. And when my body is saying, uh uh, uh, uh we're not doing that crap, um, I had to start listening. Because when I didn't, the more I didn't listen, the more in pain I was. And it wasn't fun. It was not fun. And it's just, I want to use this. I want to use this uh, stencil. Um, it's like a circle. It just, it goes around and around and around. You, you know, you take a day off of your feet or your back or your body or whatever um, and listen to it and relax you know may take a few days and things calm down to what I call a normal pain and then I would do something stupid whoops I'll take these off for right now I would do something stupid like um, you know go back out and you know have to go to this place or that place and be on my feet and then I'm right back into the same situation so um, in order to get through that denial stage, I actually had to listen. Um, I had to listen to my, what my body was telling me. And it was telling me, Cindy, cool it. You can't do this, right? All the while still thinking, ah, no big deal. I'm going to have, you know, my doctor fix me. Life is good. Everything's fine. So anyways, we got that denial. Well, then, you know, you're working on the denial, trying to get that taken care of, and then you start getting mad. You start getting really, really, really mad. Um, well, actually, but I'm sorry, back that up. Before you get mad, you get scared. And you're like, oh my God, how am, how am I going to handle this? How, how can I live like this? I don't know if I can live like this. And you just start, all these scenarios start going around in your head, and you're thinking, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. I, I can't I can't live like this. I can't live in this kind of pain. How do I do it? Blah, 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 blah. And this is just stuff that keeps going around and around and around in your head. And I, again, I've told you guys this before, and I'm going to tell you again. One of the things I found is journaling. Journal, 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 journal. Um, hopefully you're in an environment where if you decide to start journaling, it's not something i got to shut my phone off. Hold on just a second. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. Oh, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, journal. Journal, journal, journal. I can't tell you enough. Um, it, 
it has helped me so much, uh, you know, get a lot of that anger and a lot of that scared and a lot of those feelings out into the open and, and not really into the open, but basically out of my head on paper so that, you know, I could not just keep rolling the same thoughts over and over and over in my head. So journaling was my way to um, deal with the denial, deal with being really scared, deal with the anger, the anger that why did this happen to me? There's no reason for it. Um, I should not have had to go through this. Um, all of that. So when you live in denial and you live scared and you have a chronic pain or a chronic issue or a mental illness, whatever the case may be, then you have to learn how to get through that. Um, I've seen a lot of people stay in that cycle, in that cycle of those emotions, um, going around and around and around saying, you know, oh my God, I can't do this, you know, my life is bad, it's awful, I can't handle this, you know, I'm never going to be the same, blah, blah, blah. The whole cycle of everything, all of those thoughts, the negativity and the, the sadness, really, I mean, because you are, you're sad, you're, how, you know, how can I keep doing this? So, what I had to learn is that I can't live in denial the rest of my life, okay? First of all, the there is medical um, medical evidence is there. There is um, I've been told time and time and time again. I want that. I want the dots, but I don't want that paper. Um, I have been told time and time and time again that by doctors that you know what this is here. It's here to stay. You've you've really messed it up. We can't fix it, which I thought was just ludicrous. And see, I went and put those arrows on there. I don't know if I can put that on there or not. No, we're not going to. Um, so it takes a lot of internal processing. And look what I found. Ha ha! Ha ha! What happens is once you get through all of that processing of the denial, the anger, and the scared, we're going to go into this. We're not to acceptance yet. That's a, that's a ways to go. But the first thing you need to do is work through the denial. You need to listen to what the doctors are saying. If you don't agree with that certain doctor, go find another one. Get another opinion. Don't um, just take that one doctor and say, oh yeah, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be. I could have swore I just saw my husband come in here. It must be not. I'm seeing things! <laughs> um... So you have to, one, you have to be um, okay with what your medical provider is telling you. Um, make sure you have somebody that's very rep reputable in the area. Talk to people. Even if, even if it's a mental health issue, issue and you need to get counseling of any kind, talk to people in the area. Hey, has anybody heard of a really good counselor that, you know, you don't have to go into detail. You don't have to say, oh, it's for me, I need to go, even though don't you don't need to hide it but some people are very uncomfortable coming out in public with it and I'm okay with it it doesn't bother me I'm like hey you know I need to find a surgeon and I need one that's good and I need one that has fixed people and and I got my recommendations and so I went to that surgeon and guess what that surgeon told me the same exact thing my last surgeon told me there's nothing we can do, although he did say he would go in and try, hence my second back surgery. So he went in and tried, and then he said to me, after surgery, he's like, there was nothing I could do in there. So at that point, you know, that's where when the, the, the scared and the anger gets in. Well, why can't you fix me? Why can't you take care of the problem? You're, you know, you were recommended to me. And it's not something you say to the doctor. I did not, you know, I didn't get upset at him. It's not his fault. Um, you know, and he attempted to do what I thought he could do, which he couldn't. And so I ended up, um, after I saw him, I went back to my first surgeon. <laughs> and I said, well, my second surgeon tried it and he couldn't fix it. And, you know, and the guy was like, you know, I realize that. It's, it, you can't fix it. So... 
living in denial. Like I said, you're doing things you aren't supposed to be doing. You're, um, you're just, you're making, you're making your life a lot harder. So much harder than it has to be. Um, so in order to start getting out of this denial, like I said, you really have to start listening to your body. And that's what I did. I started listening. I'm not sure if I want to put this on here yet or not. I don't think I'm going to. Um, and one thing I'm going to say is, I don't know if you guys can see this. I want to rub just a little bit of silver on it. Oh, maybe I'll use a little gray gesso. Um, it's a clock. Something that takes time, it takes a lot of time to get past that denial stage. At least it did for me. So here's my clock. One, two, three, right there. Um, it, it took me many, 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 many months, I'm gonna say close to a year, to get past that denial stage. And then I went into the um, scared and angry. And we're gonna do angry on another day. Um, but. Right now, I just want to focus on this denial. So my advice to you is I'm going to do some more to this. Let me, actually, let me grab something. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, what I wanted to get is my punches. I have a couple punches here that I want to use. So, um, and this is just a piece of black cardstock with little white dots on it. So, um... Process, like I said, processing the denial is not easy. It's rough. It takes a lot to process it. It takes a lot to actually start accepting the fact that um, you're in this position and it's not likely to change and you have to deal with it. So, um, and it's funny because the whole time I was doing this and I was going through this denial and dealing with it or trying to deal with it, um, my friends and my family would say, Cindy, you can't do that anymore. And I'm like, yes, I can. I can do it. Watch. And so I do stupid things. And then, you know, I'd be laying on the couch crying and they're like, you know, they didn't say I told you so. It was more of a, you know, I'm really sorry type than it was, you know, I told you so. Um, my husband, he tried so many times to tell me, stop, you can't do that, you can't do that, you need to cool it. And I would just keep doing it. <laughs> you know, it's like we have thick heads, you know. Um, so you need to listen to your body. You need to listen to what it's telling you. You need to see the, the signs and understand the signals and know what you have to do um, for yourself so that you're not putting yourself in extra pain and you're not putting yourself in those positions where um, you're going to cause yourself more harm. You know, let's say it's anxiety or um, depression, okay? Uh, you don't, number one, depression, you don't need to be around Debbie Downers. No, no, no. Depression is not good for Debbie Downers. Or it's not good to be around somebody that's a Debbie Downer when you have depression. Um, because all they do is they just keep bringing you down even more. So, don't, if you can, don't put yourself in those positions. Don't allow yourself to be, um, To cause yourself more harm. You know, if you have anxiety and you know, you know, driving on a Saturday afternoon or Friday afternoon through rush hour really, you know, um, gets, gets you into that anxiety mode, do your best to try not to drive during that time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm basically just saying try to do your best to stay out of harm's way if you can, depending on what you've got going on. So that's all I'm saying. Um, I am going to take this, whoops, now, 
I love put I, I have this thing for circles. I don't know what it is. I like circles. Put you right up there. And I'm just gluing on all these circles. The only thing I have in here is this is Elmer's glue. School glue, white glue, whatever you want to call it. That's all it is. Um, I'm just using up these circles that I just punched out. And then we're going to do some journaling. And what I'm going to journal about is basically how hard it was living in denial. Um, and the, the more pain that I caused myself by not listening to my body and listening to the people around me that love me and um, just not listening. So let me grab, I want to grab a white pen. Oops, there's another little hole. I'm going to use tacky glue, it's right here. Another little circle. Do, do, do. Where do you want to go? Right there looks good. So now I've got a Posca pen here. That one doesn't want to stick. My my page, can you see it? It's like warped. <laughs> I think it's because I used so much gesso on it. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. So now is time to doodle and journal. So let me get my journaling done really quick. And then we'll be right back and we'll finish up the doodles. I'll be right back. All right, so what I did is I did a little bit of journaling here in my circles. Basically, um, things like do only what you can, um, listen to your family, um, listen to your body. And when you know you're going to cause yourself more pain, I just stuck my arm in wet paint. Um, stop. You need to stop. And you need to listen. Listen to your body. Relax. Breathe. Um, that's the only thing that's going to help you uh, understand that you have that issue. So, you know, like I said, sometimes it's a lot harder than others. Some days you're like, oh, I feel great. I can do this. And you just cause, complicate more and more trouble. So be really careful. Um, I'm going to try to get more in here. I have this thing, my dots, dots, dots. Love dots. So basically, living in denial, that's it in a nutshell. And how I was able to actually start getting out of that denial mode was, one, listening to my surgeons. Two, listening to my counselor. Three, listening, well, I should start out, one, listening to my body. Um, listening to my counselor, listening to, um, you know, the people and the friends and family close to me, and listening to the, um, looking at the facts, looking at the MRIs, seeing what the issue is, and it takes a long time. It's not easy to just overnight say, oh, all right, I'm good. I accept it and let's move on. It doesn't work that way. So I hope this has helped you a little bit. Again, this is only my opinion. I am not a professional. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a doctor. I'm telling you my story, the way it happened to me. And I hope you guys, you know, I hope, I hope it helps somebody out there. Um, that is my goal by doing my story. I just want to help somebody. If, if you're sitting there in your living room and you don't understand what, why you're going through these emotions and, and what to do about them or how to listen to them, um, if I can just help that one person, then I'm happy. That's what I'm here for. All right? You guys take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. As always, hit like, share, comment. I'll answer any of the comments that you have or questions. Um, and as always, be kind, have fun. That's what life's all about. And happy creating. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.